अनंतम विभुम निर्विकल्पम निरीहम शिवम संगहीनम यदोंकार गम्यम निराकारम अत्युज्वलम मृत्युहीनम परम ब्रह्म नित्यम तदेवाहमस्मि नमो नमस्ते गुरवे महात्मने विमुक्त संगाय सदुत्तमाय निद्वयानंदरसस्वूपिणे भूमि सदा पारदयांबुधा नमस्ते नमस्ते विभो विश्वमूर्ति नमस्ते नमस्ते चिदानंदमूर्ति नमस्ते नमस्ते तपोयोगगम्य नमस्ते नमस्ते श्रुतिज्ञानगम्य स्वाराज्य साम्राज्य विभूतिरेशा भवत्कृपा श्री महिम प्रसादात प्राप्ता मया श्री गुरवे महात्मने नमो नमस्ते स्तु पुनर्नमोस्तु नमो नमस्ते स्तु पुनर्नमोस्तु नमो नमस्ते स्तु पुनर्नमोस्तु नमस्तस्म सदकस्म कस्म चिन्मसे नम यदि तद्विश्वेण राजते गुरुराजते यदि तद्विश्वेण राजते गुरुराजते third chapter the last verses we will chant we will chant from 40th verse that is where does the desires lie from that point indriyani mano buddhi asya adhishthana mutyate ज्ञानमृतन तस्मांद्रियाद नियम्य भरत शभा पापन प्रजहिष्येन ज्ञान विज्ञाननाशन इंद्रिया पराण्याहु इंद्रिभ्य परम मन मनसस्तु परा बुद्धि यो बुद्धे परतस्तु सह बुद्धे परम बुद्धवा संस्तभ्यात्मात्मना जहि शत्रु महाबा काम दुरासद सो here is the method which has been discussed now they started from the indriya 
then they are going to indra the subtler than the indriyas that is subtler and which is more causal causal you understand that generally the from the subtle the gross has come so as we move from the gross to the subtle we go to the deeper and deeper causal level that indriyas senses unless the mind is there to support them they will not be known at all mind is the subtler than indriyas then buddhi is still subtler than the mind and he is saying even subtler than the buddhi is the saha they have said then they have said buddhe param buddha that which is subtler than the buddhi which is higher than the buddhi knowing that you get completely established in your atma samstabhya atmanam atmana yahi shatrum mahabaho kama roopam durasadam this invincible enemy called desires they can be won over now here we should understand it's a very general method which has been given that anything we want to correct it is always better to go to the as deep causal level as possible the cause always lies deeper and there we have to apply the treatment suppose even as we generally in our regular practice those who want to become good but not able to become those who don't want to become for them sadhana is not necessary but those who want to become good for them sadhana is necessary suppose we have the tendency to always hurt people or behave a little wrongly or in a wrong manner angrily or whatever whenever the behavior is coming out then we feel bad maybe at that moment we don't feel later on we feel that i have behaved wrongly i have hurt him i should not so but what happens is that again we do the same thing in another context and maybe in the same context also and then again feel that i have done the wrong thing i should not have done it the fact is that why this correction is not coming is we are trying to change the effect without looking into the cause when some effect has to be changed we have to look into the cause so all our behaviors all our whatever interactions we are doing they are actually caused by our thoughts is it not unless there is a thinking in you that you will come to cird would you have come always any action is taken the cause is the thought now if i am having some hurting behavior or wrong behavior it means i have a corresponding causal thought in me which is resulting in this behavior so if i have to niyamya that behavior this is where it is coming we start try to do it from outside and it never become successful that is suppression of the behavior fir se kar diya fir hum control karne ki koshish karte hain wo nahi hoga so what is causing that behavior look into that and try to bring in a change there you understand my point so the cause is the thoughts the wrong thoughts in our mind so you have to look within the entire spiritual sadhana is to look within our always the focus is external that focus has to be changed to within the looking within that is normally whenever there is a situation something is wrong immediately our focus is on the situation why it is like this why this is not like that our focus in spirituality should be that you change the situation that is not the matter but your focus should be on the mind that maybe it is not all right but why did i get angry or why did i get affected why did i become hateful about it that is my mind has not reacted properly this is the major the uh, the actual difference between spiritual sadhana and any other practice that spirituality means we have always to change the focus to from the situation to the response of our mind to any situation do you get my point normally our focus is on jo kuch bhi hota hai uske upar hum sochte hain jab hum sadhak bante hain to wo focus change kar usko badal ke जो हमारा मन कैसे उस अवस्था में रिएक्ट कर रहा है उस मन के रिएक्शन के ऊपर मन के प्रतिक्रिया के ऊपर मन की प्रतिक्रिया के ऊपर हमें ध्यान देना है ध्यान अंदर पे रहना चाहिए सो वी हैव टू लुक इनटू द कॉज व्हिच इज गेटिंग ट्रांसलेटेड इनटू माय रॉन्ग बिहेवियर दैट इज द फर्स्ट स्टेप 
now even if you are able to find out the thoughts you will find that thoughts are not within our control that is they are coming again and again and we we don't know where to hold on how the thoughts can be controlled now here what i we, what we are doing to control the thoughts of the mind we are applying the intelligence that where we should focus where what we should do etc with the intelligence only we are doing now thoughts are actually a radiation from our mindset if you can call something in sanskrit we call it bhava bhava means suppose somebody is very udara they are noble some people are there who are broad minded noble minded some people are there very selfish always looking for what we can take from other people always self seeking selfish so these are the that is the mindset is like that bhava means those who have the noble bhava those who have the noble mindset their thoughts will always be noble those who have a selfish mindset their thoughts will always be selfish according to the mindset it will come thoughts are actually getting radiated from the mindset as i give the example generally suppose a iron ball is there if you heat it to red hot it the radiations will be red if you want a blue radiation from it you have to raise the temperature further when that is the content that molecules they are vibrating at a higher energy point then only it will give the so we have to change the content of the mind if the content of the mind is changed then automatically we don't have to control the thoughts at all we don't have to control our behavior whatever is natural it will happen we don't have to have an artificial control from outside because whatever we will do we will do from a very noble mindset wishing good and auspiciousness mangala for everybody so whatever we do even if it has apparently hurt somebody also there will be something good about it that is why there is a statement about brahma is saying that uh, brahma is asked narad by narada that how is it that you are running this huge universe we are we cannot run even our family everybody is making mistakes and all and you are running this infinite universe cannot it happen that your step goes on the you make a wrong, you take a wrong step and something goes wrong brahma's reply is it can never happen because i am always kept i have always kept vishnu in my heart so whatever i do i have kept vishnu in my heart so whatever step i take that is the right step now this is a story but you should take the message what we have been discussing all these days is to keep vishnu in our heart not the murti vishnu but our own atma which is infinite which is all pervading vishnu means vyapnoti iti vishnu which is all pervading so when we anchor our mind our intelligence in that real identity all pervading universal identity then whatever we do it is in harmony with the universal law it is the right step that right sometimes may we have to that right step may kill people also but it is the right step provided we have been able to that is why we always said that the surrender is the most powerful method in sadhana there is nothing more than surrender because surrender means you are not doing anything from your egoistic point of view at all you have kept vishnu in your heart and whatever happens you are just taking the step naturally in harmony with the natural the fundamental law of nature you are behaving in that manner so the whatever is the mindset we have to purify that if we purify the mindset then our thoughts will become pure and thoughts will get translated into the right behavior whatever is the right behavior that will come now how to purify that mindset that is what we are doing in spirituality we are constantly thinking ruminating analyzing about the atma which is uniform universal where there is no bheda at all no division at all because from birth and before birth also because we are inheriting the tendencies of our parents and grandparents and everything we have made our mind intelligence fragmented by always thinking of the likes and dislikes and the gross world mind has got fragmented 
the same mind same intelligence if it is given to constantly interacting with the concept of the soul then it will slowly become like the soul this is the fundamental technology of spiritual sadhana that suppose even if the soul did not exist it does not matter suppose soul is only a concept it doesn't matter because your mind is interacting with the concept of the soul and taking all the properties you have assigned to the soul by that it is becoming like the soul you get it the mind becomes the soul so whether the soul concept soul is there or not is an it is there but even if it had not been there it does not matter because the concept of the soul we are interacting with and by that we are transforming our mind to become the soul that is what we do so it is absolute in the absolutely in the most causal level that that is why he said evam buddhe param budva when we have the knowledge of the soul now it can mean two stages when we are saying that param drishtva nivartate the other shloka 2.59 i said that um ras uh, विषया विवर्तंत निराहार से देहिन रसवर्जम रसोप्य परम दृष्ट निवर्त दिस् परम दृष्ट इट इज नॉट जस्ट एन ऐडिया और कॉन्सेप्ट इट इज एन एक्सपीरियंस देर आत्म साक्षात्कार दैट वेन यू नो दैट दिस इज मई रियल ऐडेटिटी नाउ हियर ऑलसो एवं बुद्धे परम बुद्धवा दैट मीन्स विद द बुद्धि यू हेव टू गेट फ्यूज इन टू दैट दैट इज ऑलसो a realization not just a concept when we start living the concept living the concept that which is superior to the buddhi that becomes realized that means that is also like an experience but it is not a physical experience or the experience kind as we are saying in atma sakshatkara i will come to it again because some questions are there about it so this param budva why they said because that is the most subtle thing we can think of and that is the universal soul once we take to it then automatically the mindset gets changed the intelligence gets changed then the mind has its effect on the indriyas and the body and all our behavioral interactional everything get undergo transformation sally can you show and the, the other one we have given in that the third slide i think you change one after another i will tell so we should remember that to treat anything we should try to go to the deepest possible causal level as much we can go down so much will be the, eff the efficient will be the method see this is what we studied in indriyani manobuddhi asyadhishthana mutyate एतर्मोहयति एष ज्ञानमावृत देहिन सो द सीट ऑफ डिजायर इज सेंसेस माइंड एंड इंटेलिजेंस दट वायलेट द पिंक सर् स्क्वेर इन सैड ट्रीट एट द काजल लेवल दट इज वेर द सीट ऑफ डिजायर इज देर इट्स सेल्फ वी हेव टू अप्लाई द ट्रीटमेंट ना वॉट एवर मेथड्स वी हेव डिस्कस्ड इन दिस चैप्टर सो फार आर दीज थ्री there are other methods also in bhagavad gita because we have not discussed i have given only these three what are the methods samatva attitude why samatva because that is the greatest way of treating the desires because it is to keep our evenness towards the result whether i get the desired result or not the evenness of the mind is kept but it will not happen until we are under this all the bhagavad gita yoga we call it karma yoga but it is bhagavad gita itself it causes calls it buddhi yoga buddhi yoga because without understanding this yoga cannot be performed it's a synthesis of jnana bhakti karma all together so once we understand how this samatva can be kept that means keeping away the carrot of desire as i have been saying all these days then automatically the samatva will be there we will joyously do whatever to be done result sometimes will be successful sometimes not sometimes mixture of the two but we won't get affected by that because we are doing whatever best is possible and we are doing out of joy so the joy does not depend on the desired result or is not getting affected by not getting the desired result so that is the samatva attitude 
సైడ్ బై సైడ్ ఐ హ్యావ్ గివన్ ద శ్లోకాస్ ఆల్సో దిస్ ఈజ్ యాక్చువల్లీ స్లైడ్ ఫర్ ఇట్ ఈస్ వెరీ ఓల్డ్ ఫైవ్ ఇయర్స్ ఓల్డ్ వీ హ్యాడ్ యూస్డ్ ఇట్ ఇన్ ఇండోనేషియా దోస్ శ్లోకా నంబర్స్ దే వర్ లైవ్ వర్ల్డ్ ఇయర్ సో ద మోమెంట్ యూ టచ్ దోస్ శ్లోక టూ పాయింట్ ఫోర్ ఎయిట్ దట్ శ్లోకా విల్ కమ్ దట్ ఈస్ ద వే ఇట్ వాస్ ప్రిపేర్డ్ నౌ దే ఆర్ నాట్ ఆపరేటివ్ ఎనీవే ఇఫ్ యూ రైట్ డౌన్ ద సమత్వ attitude is i have given only two 2.48 and 6.32 something similarly the other is surrender there also i have given one is 3.30 where sanyasya adhyatma chetasa 330 that is mai sarvani karmani sanyasya adhyatma chetasa nirashir nirmamo bhutva yudhyasva vigata jwaraha and another the other examples are in 18th chapter 18th chapter is actually really dealing with the samarpana bhava the surrender is really discussed in detail in 18th chapter where he is saying that sarva guhyatamam that i will tell you the greatest secret and then only he is saying manmana bhava mad bhakta that that part the last part of bhagavad gita so that is another method and then jajna vision this also we have discussed in the third chapter in detail 3.9 it is also discussed in 4.24 or something fourth chapter also jajna vision has been elaborately discussed so what is the jajna vision that the whole universe is the jajna of the supreme lord and i my body mind personality being a small speck in this whole universe in the nature whatever i am doing also is a contribution to that universal yajna that means whatever qualities faculties we have depending on the situation whatever is the need i go on functioning without the selfishness selfish motive of becoming happy at the end getting something gain i mean particularly by that i will become happy surrendering that phala pravritti in result i again remind you in bhagavad gita whenever they say phala tyaga it is not about the objective phala it is about the internal objective phala phala cannot be renounced it is a causal chain which will automatically come causally follow everything outside will follow causality but that we will be happy if i get this desired result that is the ishta phala in us similarly i will be very depressed if i don't get this that is the anishta phala and the mixture of the two ishtam anishtam mishram cha trividha karmana phalam they are related to our mind not to the objective causality objective causality will follow in any case whatever we do that should be clear so this yajna vision is actually the surrendering the result from the mind and doing whatever is possible by us that is it so with that we have to treat the senses the mind and the intelligence that is as we practice all these things what will happen the desire will be eliminated from the mind the senses and the intelligence and we will slowly become pure so it is not just once it will happen it will it will be a continuous process now this i have shown the arrow that it leads to sublimation of ego as well as desires if we apply these three methods on the senses mind and the intelligence this will result in the sublimation of the ego the ego is always holding on to selfishness holding on to smallness constriction that will start getting loose becoming loose it will get sublimated desires also will become less because i am treating the desires by all these three methods every time we are treating the desires and they will become redundant now parallel to that this sublimation of ego and sublimation of desires they will always lead to prasada this is what we call joy in spirituality prasada means a placidity of the mind it's not that you will become very bubbly or so it is not like that it is a placidity of the mind this prasada will be there either in dukha or in sukha in every situation this prasada is constant sukha dukha will be there dukha also will be there this prasada will be there in dukha also it will not go sublimation of ego desires prasada finally what happens is that this i have to change a little actually this sublimation of the ego then it goes further treats the 
seat of desire. As the ego gets sublimated, the mind, intelligence, senses, they become purified. So further the ego gets sublimated, they become purified. As the prasada grows, that prasada has a direct effect on purifying the senses, mind and intelligence. So it is a cycle actually. Going through that cycle, finally it leads to sublimation of ego, desires, prasada, leading to self-experience. This is what is called param drishtva. It should lead to finally to self-experience. Now we are struggling to have the self-experience by somehow to fight with the thoughts in our meditation and somehow to get rid of the thoughts. That is not the correct way. The easier and the more foolproof method is to purify in this ma manner. Then automatically one day the mind will get settled because the focus on the self is always there in the process. So as the all the faculties get sublimated, the ego gets dissolved slowly, 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 you will find that automatically when you sit for meditation, the meditation grips you. You don't have to do meditation. It is wrong to say we have to do meditation. The meditation will grip us. When the mind starts becoming pure, the placidity dawns. Automatically you will find that when there is no work or nothing to be done, you are free. Automatically the mind will sink, get absorbed. Now that way, once we get the self-experience, what is the self-experience? The other day also we have explained that when there is no duality at all, we just, our egoistic eye gets fused to the universal eye. Now once that happens, then it has a great sublimating effect on the mind, body, intelligence. That yesterday's diagram I have shown, that the golden lines which come to the body and the mind, they, that experience has a great sublimating effect on the body-mind complex. So, to win over the desire, if you start from this level, that slowly purifying and finally attaining, going to the purest, the deepest level, then that will finally purify. It's a cyclic process that each helping the other. As the mind and intelligence getting purer, the prasada increases. As the prasada increases, it gets further purer. So A helping B and B helping A. Like that both goes on increasing. Finally, what happens is that this kind of, even after the experience also, when you remain active in the world, they start divinizing your interactive life also. There comes the more important point. Normally, people will have a samadhi, have the self-experience, but coming out of the samadhi, they will be the sa in the same soup. They will behave, behave in the same manner. The behavior will not change. But in this case, what will happen that through the interactional sadhana, constantly doing this way, our whole being starts getting purified. So it will be divinizing all the aspects of our life. It is complete divinization of the life. So that is why I have shown that the cyclic process goes on. Finally, maturation of knowledge, jnana and purity leading finally to self-realization. That is the divinity. This self-experience and self-realization we distinguish. Self-experience is a time-bound effect. You can say then on such and such day, such and such time, when I sat for meditation, I had the self-experience. You can pinpoint. But self-realization or Brahma Jnana, it is not a time-bound process. It's a slowly evolving process of the ikshana, of the buddhi. The whatever knowledge we are practicing, 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 finally the buddhi gets so purified, sublimated that it reveals the truth. It shines naturally. We don't have to analyze and understand that this is what the self is universal, the self is this, self is that. It shines in the buddhi in its own natural manner, sahaja. It becomes sahaja. That is what we call self-realization. That you cannot pinpoint that on such and such time, such and such day I had it. It's a constant process of purification, constant process of evolution. Even perhaps we cannot say that there is an end to it. That means if you feel that you are absolutely fused in that, then also some circumstance may ha come where you have to further activate. But no sadhana struggle will be there. That's it. It becomes natural to expand. I give the example, suppose a well is there. It is full with water. 
so we call the well fulfilled it's a fill full now suppose you increase the cavity of the well and add more water then also it will be full if you make it a lake and fill it with water then also it will be full so whether it is small medium or big in all the cases it is full this is the nature of the fulfillment of a knower that cavity goes on increasing suppose one is full in a certain situation now if he is put in a mahabharata war like this he will find that he is becoming insufficient but his natural tendencies will increase the cavity and fill it with further water so he will remain full there also the fulfillment will not go but the fulfillment also can have different dimensions each knower will have a different dimension of fulfillment some knower will have a very great dimension some knower will have a smaller dimension those who have very great dimension they are generally called maharshis that means they are the people who give codes for the society directs guides the society because they have that social huge dimension with which they can function still and lead the society they generally like vyasadeva and all they will write the shastras they will have that great a. see in this bhagavad gita sadhana it is a combination of interactional and non interactional non interactional means when we are not active suppose only we are contemplating on the truth we are meditating on the truth they are called non interactional sadhana and interactional means when we are active we are trying to purify our mind trying to purify our intelligence trying to purify the senses that is all interactional sadhana now bhagavad gita all this real sadhana will be a mixture of the two for general people for the very pe- few people who are free of desires we call it exclusive jnana nishta that is exclusive knowledge pursuit or kevala jnana nishta they will be only in the non interactional sadhana but by and large all others will have to be with the both now how these two kinds of sadhana will help each other that i have tried to show it here now non interactional sadhana means meditation contemplation introspection this the purpose of non interactional sadhana is discovering our real identity that we should not forget most of the people forget that doing japa doing japa i am doing japa one hour two hours half a half an hour. what is the purpose of doing the japa they forget purpose of doing the japa is to discover our real identity that we should not forget that is why repeatedly our shastras say that manana trayate iti mantra that mantra is not given to just to utter the sound it should be ruminated upon mananath means you should be thought upon ruminated upon contemplated upon the mantra will always have a meaning in it the contemplation on the meaning when it is done it will manana trayate it will relieve us from all the worldliness that is the purpose of the mantra so in our non interactional sadhana meditation or contemplation or all our aim should be very much clear that we want to discover what is that i in us i always said that if you try to discover you should remember that we are always trying to find out something different from us in everything when we are trying to find out our self also the tendency will be i want to see the self as if it is different from me and it is never going to be successful because self is what i am do you get my point wo apne atma ko apne se bhinna roop se kabhi dekh sakte hain kya atma to aap hi hai na aap se bhinna roop se aap nahi dekh sakenge kabhi bhi but our tendency will be always to because from birth we are given to look for something else look for something else find out something else inside also we want to look for something else so the if we are aim our aim is to self discovery then this tendency to look for the second has to be overcome do you get my point so if that is the focus in our japa or contemplation or rumination we should be aware of that that this tendency to look for the second must go and that is where again the surrender becomes a great help because surrender means i am releasing my effort that effort itself is self defeating my effort to discover the self 
that itself is making the self different from me making me small so it is self defeating effort my effort to discover the self is making self as different non self is it not so different from me so that i have to become effortless i have to leave the effort how can we do it surrender that i don't want self realization i don't want anything oh lord or guru you take me wherever you want or the guru shakti the mantra or whatever completely releasing ourselves relaxing ourselves and leaving us in the vehicle of the mantra that you take me wherever you want that helps a lot to get rid of it so in all our non meditation non interactional practices we should be very much aware of the aim of our practice without that no meditation will become successful 40 years you meditate nothing will happen you will get a little peace because you are keeping quiet at that time some little peace some little energy will be there or if you practice some silence something this and some effect will be there but you will nowhere approach the self by that unless we are clear about our goal how can we approach it is not possible another point here very important is that we may understand the goal but as long as i am replying many of the questions so those who have asked they should not think that i will separately again answer uh when we are looking for something then unless there is an emotional associ- association with the goal the sadhana will not become powerful you understand emotional as- association suppose you want something fervently then will you not think of it always and try to get it fervently that that is because of the emotional association so unless you emotionally also feel that i must realize i must go that emotional association has to be there with the mantra with the effort then it will automatically will forget that thoughts other thoughts will not disturb you at all if the emotional association is there then you will find that throughout your activities throughout the day because of your emotional intensity for that goal you will find always that goal will be like a sinusoid like a star like a sun it will be always you will be aware of the goal whatever you are doing not that you are fully thinking of it but the goal sun will always be lit behind your mind we call it dhyana mukhinata dhyana mukhinata means mukhinata means looking so whatever we are doing the mind is still looking for whatever is the aim of the meditation so when you sit for meditation automatically the other thoughts will not come you will it will easily it will fall into the rail and it will straight away go to meditative state am i clear so this dhyana mukhinata has to come through the interactional sadhana throughout the day that anchor we should not lose anchor in the self anchor in the goal so when the emotional association with the anchor is there the our journey will become easier and faster so parallelly with this uh, non interactional sadhana it will lead to transcending the subject finally it will lead to transcending the subject object duality and meditational absorption helps attain interactional sublimity and impersonality and interactional sublimity leads to better meditational absorption this is how the two are regenerative one will help other interactional sadhana is throughout your actions you have to practice these three samatva jajya bhavana surrender samarpana you can add to that also something else but these three are the major ones that is what we have been discussing all along that's all interactional sadhana that throughout interactional sadhana all your interactions you have to be aware of these three sadhanas and try to convert all your activity into jajna try to uh, remain in samatva buddhi that whatever the result comes i will have the evenness try to surrender your ego your selfishness always these are the three things so what will happen by interactional sadhana will lead you your mind will take your mind to a purity sublimity level in which you will automatically meditate easily that just now as i said that meditation the throughout the day the dhyana mukhinata when you sit for the non interactional meditative sadhana automatically the mind will get absorbed and each time your mind gets absorbed you will find that the effect remains 
at least if not throughout the day, a large part of the day. That the coolness, that antashitalata we call it. That is antashitalata means as if I have taken an inner bath. If the meditation we get the absorption, then there will be a uh, very a poised coolness inside. So that will allow you to, during your interactions, that will allow you to behave with the anchorage, whatever we are saying with the Jajya Bhavana, surrender and Samatva Buddhi, because that will keep the Dhyana Mukhinata also. So more you get into the meditational absorption, throughout the day interactional sadhana is becoming more and more powerful. And as the interactional sadhana is becoming more powerful, your meditation is becoming easier. So A helping B and B helping A. Like that both go on increasing till you get fused in the soul. So that is what we have shown. So finally it leads to emotional fulfillment, intelligential fulfillment and a grand integration of the personality. Grand integration of the personality, why I said? Because normally always there is a clash going on between the senses and the mind, mind and the intelligence. Intelligence says you do it, but the mind is not agreeing. So there is always a stress, strain. We call it, in Sanskrit, we call it klesha. Same as English, clash. <laughs> clash is klesha. So that klesha will go. Everything inside will become harmonious. The whole thing gets integrated. The personality will become integrated. The senses, the buddhi, the mind, everything will. So it's a grand integration of the personality through this synthesis of both sadhana together. That is what the Bhagavad Gita says. Now, related to this, there is one question we, I, which I will answer first. Does the process of knowing the Brahman uh, include two phases wherein the first phase is to identify the self, the seer atma in us, and the second phase is to integrate it with the universal I, the Brahman. Well, not exactly like this, but there are two phases like this. In Bhagavad Gita, also it is clearly demarcated. The first one is called Atmasthiti. Atmasthiti means get stabilized in the I, the self. And the second one is called Brahmasthiti. In Atmasthiti, you need meditation and Samadhi. In Brahmasthiti, you don't need meditation or Samadhi. That is, it's done. Whatever has been, it is done. It is called the state of Sahaja Samadhi. Yatra yatra mano yati tatra tatra samadhaya. That is the Brahmasthiti. That means once you know that the whole universe is only an expression of the Brahman, you don't miss that Brahman anywhere. Brahman or Atma, whatever you say. Everything is, an exp is floating on that. That is the substratum. So there is no question of missing that consciousness or Atma or Brahman anywhere in any interaction, in any action or any, anybody at all. So when we are meditating and going into Samadhi, because we are missing the pristine soul in the world, that is why we are coming away, getting away from the world and when there is no world, no I, nothing, that is our personality also is not there. When the world goes, our personality also goes. So, in that we are coming to know the pristine drashta or the atma there in samadhi. But when we are coming out, again the world is disturbing us, distracting us. That is, I may have atma sthiti, but I am not having brahma sthiti. In case of brahma sthiti, you will not feel any need to go into samadhi at all. Because you don't miss that. Everywhere it is that and that alone, nothing else he sees. He interacts with the world, but never misses the truth. If you go into the Bhagavad Gita, then you will find in the Atma Sthiti is in, you write down, those who are interested. It is there in many cases, I have written down something. 6.182123 and in between shlokas also. 6.6 .6 chapter, 182123. If you have the book, you open. After giving the 
general instruction for a sadhak that is one should have a moderate life yukta ahara viharasya yukta cheshtasya karmasu yukta sapnava bodhasya yoga bhavati dukha that how the yoga will become comfortable bhagavad gita is always advising don't go for extreme fasting uh, very harsh tapasya he says no this yoga is not meant for such people that because the yoga has to it has to be a buddhi yoga it has to dawn in the intelligence it has to be the whole body mind intelligence everything has to be in a very placid state of being so yukta ahara viharasya means everything moderate you ahara you moderate and take sattvic food etc if you do anything make your actions also moderate not running after very desireful things and hateful etc moderate it like that these are the general instructions given which we have already done now in the 18th verse of 6th chapter he is saying would you like to recite yada viniyatam chittam atmanye vavatishthate निस्पृह सर्व सर्व कामेभ्यो युक्त इत्युच्यते तदा सी दीज आर द पॉइंट्स यू शुड होल्ड ऑन टू ही हैज सेड युक्त इति उच्यते तदा देन इट इज कॉल्ड युक्ता सो दैट इज द योगा स्टेट व्हाट इज इट यदा विनियतम चित्तम अगेन दैट सी नियता हैज कम niyata earlier yesterday or day before i have explained in great detail it is not an external forceful uh, suppression or control it is from within so when the chitta the mind viniyatam means vishesha rupa na niyatam from within it has been disciplined and finally you are able to get into the chittam atmani atmani means in the atma eva that means nowhere else these are very important see a small eva which is a indeclinable word we call it abhya this eva is very important atmani eva that means only in the atma not anything else when we say that the swami ji meditation mein thoughts to kuch nahi rehta hai pura man khali ho jata hai lekin kuch to hota nahi उसका अर्थ क्या है कि मन आप में है फिर भी आप सोचते हैं कि मेडिट अभी और कुछ थॉट नहीं है हम हैं थॉट नहीं है वो सारा ही थॉट है दैट आई एम देयर देर इज नो थॉट आर दे नॉट थॉट्स दे आर ऑल वृत्तीज सो आत्मनी एवा मीन्स देर इज नथिंग अदर नो अदर वृत्ति शुड बी देयर ओनली आत्मवृत्ति विल बी देयर नथिंग एल्स शुड बी देयर दिस एवा सच अ स्मॉल टू लेटर्ड वर्ड इट इज सो इम्पॉर्टेंट आत्मनी एवा अवतिष्ठते it remains in completely sitting in the soul atma nispriha sarva kamebhya at that time there is no question of any kama nothing else is there but it will not happen unless we rid your mind to some extent of the kama it will not happen nispriha sarma sarva kamebhya yukta ityuchyate dada this is the atma sthiti it is not brahma sthiti then he is further explaining next verse this is very famous yatha deepo nivatastho nengate sopama smrita yogino yata chittasya yunjato yogam atmanah he says that second line that this is the example of the yogis yata chitta means which has been already um, brought to the atma yunyato yogam atmanah when the yogis uh, disciplined mind yata chitta means disciplined mind when the yogis disciplined mind has is connected to the atma when it is anchored in the atma this is the upama that means this is the example for that they have given an example so this is the example of a yogi whose mind is resting in the atma that is the idea 
What is the example? Yatha dipo nivatastho nengate sopama smrita. This is the upama. The lamp is kept where there is no wind. Air is there but no wind. At that point, the flame, it does not flicker at all. But the flame is there, it is absolutely steady. Is it not radiating? It is radiating. But you are not finding any movement there. Like that the soul also, it's consciousness. So that consciousness will be felt. The radiation will be felt. But not by the body, the radiation will be there still. But there won't be any movement. The mind will not move. But the mind will be filled with the soul radiation. This is the self-experience they are talking about. Atmasthiti. It continues. Yatro paramate chittam niruddham yoga sevaya yatra chaivatmanatmanam Pashyanatmanitushyati. He gets completely fulfilled and satisfied with the experience. Seeing the Atma, he doesn't move at all because he gets completely satisfied with that. Sukhamatyantikam yattad buddhigrahyamati indriyam veti yatrana chaivayam sthitas chalati tattvataha. He says that here, Sukham Atyantikam, this is the unimagined bliss. But Buddhi Grahyam, it is not anywhere else, it is in the Buddhi. Buddhi Grahyam, it is revealed in the Buddhi. Atindriyam, it is not perceived, that although it is a bliss, it is not a bliss perceived by the senses. It is perceived by the Buddhi. Buddhi Grahyam Atindriyam, it is transcending the indriya sense, sense perceptions and it is only it is in the buddhi buddhi grahya yam labdhva cha param labham manyate nadhikam tataha yasmin sthito na dukhe na guruna api vichalyate it is often quoted because he says that by getting which no other gain is considered to be Transcending this. That means you, in that state you get the, we call it bliss or whatever, whatever you are gaining, gaining that you think that there is nothing beyond this. This is the highest. Yasmin sthito na dukhe na guru na api dukhe na na vichalyate. If you remain in that, then no dukha can oscillate you, can sway you at all. This is such a blissful state. Now, this is what is the Atma Sthiti. Let us go to the Brahma Sthiti. That is, what is the difference in that? This Brahma Sthiti is absolutely a knowledge. It is not an experience like this. It is a knowledge experience. It takes place in the Ikshana, in the Buddhi level. That is, you will not see, as you are seeing the world, that vision will not change. You will not see that everything will be made of consciousness. No. But your buddhi will be aware that all these are appearing in the in my in the consciousness which I am. That awareness will not go. It will naturally shine in the buddhi.